Salut tout le monde, bienvenue à Exclusif à Musique Plus aujourd'hui. On passe la journée avec nos effects. C'est ça. Je la planche avec vous au Challenger Terrain Golf dans la région euh, de Montréal aujourd'hui. On va passer la journée avec nos effets, c'est exclusif à Musique Plus. On va jouer au golf avec les boys. D'ailleurs, euh, je m'apprête à aller les rejoindre à l'instant. Pour les gens qui ne connaissent peut-être pas nos effets, on va aller voir une petite biographie à l'instant. NoFX est sûrement un des groupes punk rock les plus connus de la planète. Le Quatuor a commencé à faire du bruit dès 1983 en Californie. La formation actuelle réunit Michael Burkett, qu'on surnomme Fat Mike en anglais, et... Je m'appelle Gros Michel. En français, qu'on retrouve à la basse et au micro. Eric Melvin à la guitare, Eric Sandin alias Smelly à la batterie, puis Aaron Abeta alias El Hefe. My name is El Hefe, but today they call me... Qui rejoint la formation actuelle dès 1994. Bien que leurs fans les aiment autant pour leur musique que pour leur humour et leur décadence sur scène, les gars de NoFX sont aussi craints des médias pour leurs entrevues plutôt rébarbatives. Heureusement pour moi, à force de côtoyer les gars, j'ai développé une relation particulière avec NoFX. Yes, we're going out tonight. Au fil des années, ces punks sont devenus plus matures. En plus de fonder Fat Records, une étiquette de disques indépendante respectée qui lance des disques de groupes comme Dillinger 4 ou encore du collectif montréalais The St. Catherine. Fat Mike s'est lancé dans une croisade pour déloger George W. Bush de la Maison-Blanche en plus de plancher sur NoFX Backstage Passport, une télé-réalité documentant la plus récente tournée mondiale de son groupe. La série a aussi permis de faire connaître sa sympathique équipe technique composée du directeur de tournée Ken et des techniciens Lemo et Jay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, kill all the white man. Oh yeah, oh yeah, kill all the white man. Fat Mike from NoFX, Eric from Dillinger 4, at the Challenger on the links on a day off. Pretty cool? Yeah, it is pretty cool. Uh, lack of sleep. But the nice thing about golfing is that you can drink beer before noon and it's normal. <laughs> True. And you don't, you don't look like a loser. I don't think that uh, you need to be golfing to drink beer before noon, Mike. I think I've probably seen you do it outside the golf course. <laughs> Talk to me a bit about, uh, do you guys get to get out on the on the links as much, uh, you try to get out as much as possible when you're on tour? You bring the clubs on tour often? We always bring the clubs on tour, and we only do tours in summer and spring months. You work on that handicap, right? Yeah, yeah not really. Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps me out of trouble. So what's the what, what would you say is the secret between... Golf and punk rock. Why is there so many punk rockers playing golf? Because it seems like two worlds apart, right? Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah. It's it's antith antithesis. You work for an hour a night. You have 23 hours and nothing to do. And golf kills a lot of time, and you can get wasted there. That's it. Let's do it. L'étiquette de golf. On est punk, mais on est gentil. Couple questions about Backstage Passport. Talk to me about uh, the reason why. Why Backstage Passport? Why inviting a few cameramen on the road with you guys? Well, we wanted to travel to every country we could, and generally, when you do that, you lose a lot of money. So we figured if we bring a couple camera guys, film it, make a DVD out of it, we can recoup back some of the expenses. I mean, our airline costs in Asia alone are like $86,000. You know, we're not getting paid very much. So just filmed a little DVD because, you know, we want to see the world. Why not? Why not 
you know, take punk rock to countries that have never been before. So we never made it to DVD because we turned it into a TV show. Yeah. And now it's on a music cruise. Once again, I'm going to try to call my wife and daughter. And my daughter hasn't, she won't talk to me anymore. Every time I call, my wife tells her that daddy's on the phone and she runs away. Every time she says, daddy, come home. And I say, I can't come home yet. So she's mad. Do you ever get tired of having cameras follow you around like that? Did you guys at one point say like, okay, man, we got to turn these cameras off. I'm sick and tired of having these cameras following me everywhere. Once I had the cameras turned off. It's, it's only two guys and they're friends of ours. So it's not weird. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not like creeps like these guys. They're, they're actual friends of ours, good people. And so uh, it, it really wasn't weird. And especially because it wasn't, a, no one produced it. It was just us and our friends. It didn't feel weird at all. It's my daughter's birthday. I'm trying to get her on the phone. All she knows is that she misses me, and she doesn't. She doesn't understand why I can't come home. I don't have to be doing this. Are there things that went on there that maybe you said, like, ah, maybe we shouldn't have put that in? Maybe that I didn't want to share with the fans. Uh, not really. We, it, I th we tried to get real personal. Like, I was crying in, in the Israeli, Israeli episode, uh, which is, I just look like a total weenie. But, uh, you know, we showed that. And uh, one thing that didn't make the show, but it'll be on the DVD, is uh, I was on too many painkillers because I, I, I pulled a muscle in my leg and I pissed myself on stage in New Zealand. That's a pretty good one. Everything just got totally great. In Moscow, we had the best show, amazing. Things keep getting better. They keep getting better. We have more fun than any other band in the world. It's amazing. C'est terminé pour notre belle journée de golf. Après la pause à Exclusif à Musique Plus, on est avec les boys de NoFX au Fofon électrique. I went to a gay club last night, okay? You were there.